Sorry about that. Okay, so um, just wanted to give a, a quick overview of sort of what's happened in the last year and then sort of set, sorry, set the stage for uh, the rest of the talks. One of the things that uh, we felt last year was that we just sort of dove into all of the presentations and we didn't provide a lot of context about what was happening in the project and so we thought it was possibly a little confusing to people when we uh, got into it. So this is an attempt to um, just bring everybody up to speed on what the major uh, conversation, major topics go are going to be today. Uh, so some of the highlights uh, from this year, uh, Ben had already mentioned that we moved to the Linux Foundation. And uh, you know, I think one of the greatest benefits will be hopefully less spam on the OBS dev mailing list, which has been a constant source of pain for us. We did two releases of Open vSwitch, uh, 2.5 and 2.6. Uh, we've One of the major complaints about OBS was the irregular release schedule that we had. And so we wanted to make that more predictable to people. So we've now moved to a six month release cadence. Uh, the next release will be uh, in February. The 2.6 was the first one where we tried to hit that. And uh, now we should be moving uh, roughly every six months uh, between releases. And uh, one of the biggest things that we're, uh, we're excited about is this uh, OVN project, which I'll get into in a little bit. And we had our initial release as part of 2.6. So in every, every OVS release, <coughs> Uh, we uh, improve the, the capabilities of OpenFlow, uh, the OpenFlow support. So I won't get into all of those details, but uh, you know, I think we have support for the 2.5 version now. And there are always little uh, um, optional features that we continue to add for, for each release. Uh, for version 2.5, the, the, the main feature there was uh, introducing the connection tracker. That was a, a major source of pain for people who wanted to, to do stateful firewalling. Uh, using Open vSwitch. So, like, for example, in the OpenStack project, uh, people would redirect to a different namespace that was running IP tables so that they could do enforcement, and it was, it was kind of a mess and it was slow. Uh, there were also ways that you could make Open vSwitch uh, program its own flows, but that was very slow, um, and it wasn't uh, very good security. And so with the connection tracking, what we did was we found a way to uh, make OpenFlow, use OpenFlow to define stateful rules in a protocol that doesn't usually support stateful things. And we leveraged the use of the connection tracker in Linux kernel. Uh, and so the initial release as part of 2.5 was uh, just worked for the Linux kernel. Uh, in the, in 2.6, uh, we've started adding basic support for the other data paths and that, that will continue to improve. Uh, the, uh, won't go through all of the list, but uh, another thing that was a pretty big performance improvement was for the DPDK port, um, support for multi-queue and vhost. Uh, 2.6, as I mentioned, was we introduced OVN, and, um, and another uh, big feature sort of similar to the connection tracking was support for NAT that we added to, uh, that had support for the Linux, um, Linux data path. And, uh, Similar to the connection tracking, I think we'll start seeing that come to the other data paths too as, as time goes on. So OVN, uh, there'll be quite a few talks on OVN today. Uh, there were, um, you know, as you know, the, uh, the oven mitts that were given out as the, the speaker gifts. Uh, this is this oven theme that we have. So OVN is a project where we bring virtual networking to OBS. So Open vSwitch has always been a project where you could build things. It didn't actually provide like a distributed virtual switch or virtual networking. Uh, it provided the components so that you could build that. And then you needed to have a controller that would then create that, that sort of thing. And with OVN, what we're doing is that we're providing the, uh, we're providing that ability as part of the, the Open vSwitch project. Now we keep that in a separate directory, so we're not really cheating, we're not modifying OVS to support OVN, but we are co-developing them so that the code exists in a separate directory and it makes use of, of OVS. Uh, and so OVN is being developed in the same way that Open vSwitch was. Uh, all the development happens on the OVS dev mailing list. Uh, you know, it's the same uh, core contributors are, are working on both projects. Uh, because we moved to Linux Foundation, it's also a Linux collaborative project. We, uh, similar to the user space code in OVS, we're using uh, an Apache license for that. And um, the Newton release, which was the newest OpenStack release, has support for, for OVN. And so there seems to be quite a bit of interest in the OpenStack community for uh, Oven. So the features for Oven, uh, it provides the ability to, to create and manage logical networks over physical networks. 
Uh, we have uh, ACLs, so you can do L2 through L4 uh, policies, including uh, state for firewalling. We have uh, distributed routing for IPv4 and IPv6. We use um, all of the tricks that we know of to make this as fast as possible. So rather than going through a full uh, like Linux IP stack, uh, we calculate the routes that, what should happen to a routes, and uh, so everything happens in the fast path and is, is very fast as opposed to doing full route processing. And Ben will get into, in the next talk, uh, some, it, um, some of the benefits of caching and how uh, OBS can make use of that. Has support for uh, NAT, load balancing, and DHCP. The uh, works for Linux, DPDK, and Hyper-V. Uh, we have support for L2 and L3 gateways. And uh, one of the key things is that Oven isn't really a system in itself. It's, it's meant to provide virtual networking, but it needs something else to do the management. And so we have hooks for a bunch of different platforms, or um, we've done the support for a number of different platforms to, uh, to work with Oven. So there's the OpenStack work that's being done with uh, that's part of the Newton release. Uh, we also have Kubernetes and Docker, Mesos, and Overt support as well. Uh, central, this is future work that we need to do for Oven. Uh, central to the design of Oven is database, and so we have a central database that is used to manage all of the state. The uh, clustering is, right now it's a, it's a single database. Uh, we recognize that as something that needs to be improved, so we're looking at adding raft support uh, to the database. And um, scaling is very important to the, to the OVN project. Right now, we've tested it at the low thousands. We'd like to get to 10,000 uh, uh, virtual ports that are supported. And so we're starting to go through and, and look at improving that performance. We're looking at where the bottlenecks are in OVN. Uh, service function chaining is something that I think will be important as we want to start introducing additional services like firewall and load balancing into OVN. So uh, there'll be a talk later today that talks about how to introduce service function chaining. And another thing that we would like to have is encrypted tunnels by default, or at least the ability to provide them so that um, between any two uh, hypervisors, um, all of the traffic is encrypted, uh, which will improve the security quite a bit. The platforms that uh, OVS, that this is back to OVS, not just OVN. Uh, we, we've been working for, on Linux for a long time. Uh, the container work doesn't really require uh, anything different in OVS itself, but some of the, uh, some of the uh, glue that, is, that requires these container systems to work with OVS needs to, to change. And so we've been working with those communities to improve that. <coughs> the, um, DPDK port, DPDK is a project by Intel to do um, fast data path development, and so it works by bypassing the kernel so packets go directly from the NIC to user space, uh, which can provide really good performance. One of the, the negatives of that is that you do bypass the kernel, so if you want to use any of the kernel components like QOS or the connection tracker, you need to re-implement those. And so those things are now being introduced to DPDK. Um, but there'll be quite a few talks on DPDK today, uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, there's been work to port OVS to Hyper-V. The uh, you know, Hyper-V is the Windows uh, hypervisor support, and we're working also on a Windows port as well, and there'll be a talk about the, the Hyper-V support. And on all of these systems, as I mentioned, some of the, the pieces that we make use of in the kernel data path uh, we're having to re-implement them in like Hyper-V, DPDK, and the, the user space data path. And that work is being done. But one of the things that we're, we're looking at is BPF. And that will be the, the first subject after the break that we're going to go into, which is uh, a pretty exciting development that where in the data path, so on the Linux kernel or in the, the DPDK user space, you have basically an interpreter similar to the JVM. And at runtime, you can insert new code and new capabilities. And uh, that provides a lot of promise for improving the portability, so hopefully we could, you know, in an ideal world, we'll be able to just write the data path code once in BPF and then insert that on, run the same code on all those different platforms. And uh, Thomas Graff is going to get into uh, quite a bit of uh, detail on how that will work. And that's it. Um, if there are any questions, I think we probably just have time for one or two. Yeah. 
E4 integrated with OVS. So how long will it take us to re-implement OVM in P4? Well, I don't think that there are any changes if we if we move to P4. I don't think there are any changes that are required in OVN. Uh, it'll just be a matter of, you know, I think that and Ben could talk more about this, but I think the plan is that um, if we implement P4, it's really about implementing uh, the parser and the um, you know changing the forwarding plane, and that will just sort of be a transition, and that should be invisible to all of the the layers above it. That, that's right. Uh, P4 provides extensions to Open vSwitch and doesn't uh, disable any functionality. So, uh, what I meant was the pipeline itself, like the ESP lookup, routing, and all that stuff which we specify. Um, that could all be uh, rewritten in P4, no? It, it could be re implemented in P4. Uh, so far, I, I don't know of a reason to do that because uh, the, the basic features we need for logical routing and switching and so on are available in OpenFlow and OpenVSwitch already. Uh, probably there are uh, additional features that uh, P4 support might benefit OVN. <clears throat> Just one So currently, the, the connection tracker that was part of 2.5 uh, makes use of the Linux kernel's data uh, connection tracker. Uh, it's been re-implemented uh, for DBK and Hyper-V, but that, that port isn't complete. So for example, it doesn't do IP fragment reassembly, but um, all of that work will come, and, and ALGs for things like FTP. Um, those aren't implemented yet in those other data paths, but the, the goal is that we'll, we'll have support for those as well. to get rid of the, the Linux kernel data path? Yeah. I think that, well, the Linux kernel data path is part of the Linux kernel, so we'll, we'll never get rid of it, uh, but I could see a future where most of the development happens on the BPF. We would continue to support the, um, the existing kernel data path, uh, but that, that what we need to maintain like the Netlink interface because that's a, that's a long-term ABI that's provided by the Linux kernel. So I think there will always be a kernel data path available. It, it's possible that uh, OVS would not use it in many cases, though. Let's thank our speaker. <laughs>